Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it, yes. They sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. Welding instructor Alex DeClaire knows VR training platforms like ForgeFX help students master their skills. There's a big learning curve with welding. Virtual reality simulates that exact muscle memory that they need. Learn more at meta.com slash metaverse impact. Hello and welcome to Watch What Crap Ends, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today is the one and only Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Hi, everybody. Sit down, everybody. Sit down. Sit Ridiculous. down. Sit, sit down. down. Stop Come it. Stop on. it. Um, wow, we're very excited today because we get to recap The Valley, which had quite a big third episode. This is episode three, I believe, right? Maybe it was four. I can't remember. But um, we're going to get into that. Before we do, just a reminder, we are doing some shows next month. uh, In less than a month, or actually a month from today, we are doing Netflix as a joke at the Kookaburra Lounge here in Hollywood. So go get your tickets for that. Um, And also uh, later in the month, we will be in London and Dublin and Birmingham. That's in Europe, guys. Um, go to watchwhatcrappens.com to get your tickets for that. That's going to be all four shows are going to be just stupendous. And uh, don't forget, you can sign up at Patreon, patreon.com slash watchwhatcrappens. You get access to Crappens on Demand so you can see our beautiful faces today. Uh, additionally, we have a bonus episode that you can also get via Patreon. We did a trailer trash breakdown, shot by shot, scene by scene, of the House of the Dragon trailer. Because House of the Dragon is back. And I'm pretty sure I called Aegon, I called Amon Aegon the entire time, but his name, but it was Amon. Sorry, I mixed up Amon and Aegon. I can't believe I did that. It's hard to believe that one could possibly do that, but I did the entire time. We so, should just be um, calling them all Joe. Hey, it's Joe. <laughs> Joe. It's Joe. 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 Uh, yeah, we, um, you know, every time we announce that we did that trailer trash, we need to apologize because we don't remember shit that happened. I mean, really, House of the Dragon was on 18 years ago in yeah. Watch of Crappen's time. Okay, it was a long ass time ago. I don't remember half that shit. I mean, half the plot Ben was telling me, I was like, that happened? I forgot. Is- I forgot the dragon was originally promised to another girl and somebody stole the dragon. I mean, and I think- some dude got his eye poked out by a, you know, a little kid. And then, I mean, it's, it, there's Here's- a lot. So it's. So it's going to be one of the most frustrating things that you listen to, but we really just like talking about the ladies hair and the sets and, you know, mm-hmm. who's like the most fuckable on that show. So if you like that kind of discussion, go give it a listen. I mean, to be fair, I don't think it's really our fault that we had a hard time remembering what happened on that show, given that like 75% of that show 
was just like pitch black. It was just like you're watching a black screen and then all the characters have the same name and it happened like five years ago. So like if we can't remember it very well, that's on HBO. It's not on us. Yeah, uh, that's why I normally binge shows like that. I wait till a few seasons are out and then I, I watch a bunch of them at one time because I just forget. So yeah. in this case, we can't do that, obviously. So it's it's a little different. But anyway, super fun. We're excited for that to come back. Also, Ben, we need to have a discussion, you and I. Oh, really? About the Valley. And okay. maybe I should do this while we're not <laughs> recording. I, I feel like I'm, am, I, we, am I in trouble? I feel like I'm in trouble. No, <laughs> no, I, no. It's just a discussion, Ben. <laughs> ben, I'm an active here. bitch. Per, ben, I don't have, there's no resting <laughs> bitch in me. Here. I'm complete active bitch at all times. <laughs> Ronnie know? is holding like a little folder and is welcoming me into his office. Here, take a seat. We're just going to have a little private conversation, Ben. Well, I am twirling a, ben, a pen in my mouth between my teeth, which okay. means you might be getting fired today, Ben, <laughs> from the job that you created for yourself. Um, the board has convened. Bueller, <laughs> Bueller, if you want Ben out of this job, be asleep right now. Bueller's sleeping, you're out. Okay. <laughs> a lot. We weren't going to cover Vanderpump Villa because it's not on. I knew you were going to fucking do this. I knew you were going to I know, but it's not on the channel. And not only that, (laughs) not one person. A lot of people are like, oh my God, Vanderpump Villa. Oh my God. Now here's the problem. There's already three episodes of it out. So I don't know how we're supposed to do that. But I feel, I don't know. I feel like we're supposed to be doing it. Like, I feel like it's our job. But then what do we not cover on Bravo? Because there's so many things on the air. Like, what do we not cover? I don't feel like we can get rid of anything. So what do we do? You know, a lot of people also similarly told me that the season two of, uh, of, um, buying Beverly Hills is like amazing. And as I can't take any more Kyle. Okay, great. So I can't take any more Vanderpump shows. So there we go. Okay. Then then we solved it. Neither one of us is willing to bend. (laughs) I'm totally, I I watch, I watched some of Vanderpump Villa today, actually. And I watched, I watched the preview and the opening credits, then we had to start recording. Uh, I'm not opposed to Vanderpump Villa. I just am like, we are doing eight shows a week. And I think that like <laughs> at a certain point, I'm sorry. I'm ap- <laughs> Every show that we don't do, people say, why aren't you doing it? At a certain point, okay. we just have to draw a line. I'm sorry. You know what? Let's just wait for another <laughs> pandemic. And then when the yeah. pandemic hits, we'll go back and we'll do Buying Beverly Hills and we'll do Vanderpump Villa. And you know okay, what? Okay, well, that's solved. Hulu, glad we if, had this if Hulu meeting. wanted us to cover it, they would have sent us screeners, too. Let's be honest. <laughs> I always pull that card. Mean, I know. I always pull that card. It's like, if you want us to do it. <laughs> okay, so that solved that. Okay, we're not covering it. Okay, let's get on to the Valley. The Valley <laughs> Doubting Doty. Let's, doubting let's Doty. talk about miserable people in a hot place. <laughs> yes, let's talk about how shocking it is that there are Republicans in the Valley. I mean, right. literally, is anybody shocked? <laughs> Um, and also there's Republicans all over LA. They're just all closeted by the way. Yeah. So this, uh, this is true. Uh, unless you're Tom Selleck, but, um, or James Woods, but, uh, yeah. you know, what's, I thought, I mean, this was a great episode. I thought, but I also thought this was, they were really rude to our poor resident gay because all last episode they're teasing Zach screaming in the kitchen i did not say that how could you even say that i said that and so i was like teasing building up this whole thing we get to the end of the last episode and you know britney's like oh what about the shit that you're trying to brew up christine <laughs> and then we see five minutes later zach being like, shut up i did not say that and then it goes to be continued so you're like okay so this week we're gonna see how shit went like left at this party but then we come back and we literally never see it. And they give us like a few tiny flashbacks. Why would they cut out this big situation? I don't know. But I wanted to see Zach run to the kitchen and then hide there. Because that was so funny to me. It was the best part that Zach ran to the kitchen to get away. And then was just screaming from inside the kitchen at everybody else. <laughs> but still being too much of a whisk to go outside. Listen, Zach, you can't be surprised you're attacked when you have hair like one of the turtles in Mario Brothers. People just want to jump on your uh, jump on your head and then toss you at an enemy. That's just you've got to change the wig, dude. <laughs> it's going to engender hostility. <laughs> <laughs> seriously next he's gonna show up with a mushroom haircut you know he's just gonna keep going going down the super mario path you know and then wonder why he's being victimized at every turn he really got off scot-free with this episode because he he stirred up a lot of shit chris i mean kristen got 
you know, was accused of stirring up a lot of shit, but it was Zach who actually uh, stirred up the most shit. And then he did not get, he stayed out of it. I don't know how he did that. He just stayed in the corner making faces. He was making the, the next, the nosy next door neighbor face from bewitched that. Yeah. <laughs> just kept making that face like the Koopa Troopa head. <laughs> Koopa Troopa. So, Mixed with, <laughs> what's the neighbor's name? I don't know. I want Mrs. Kravitz. Yeah. Mrs. Kravitz. <laughs> Mrs. Osmotic, too. From Alf. Why not? Um, Who's that? Oh, from Alf. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. She was the next door neighbor who was like, Is there an alien? Um, so, uh, we start with Jax and Brittany and Sherry at the farmer's market. So I was like, wait, but what about the big fight? What's happening here? And they're like walking through and they're like buying stuff and everything. And, um, the lemonades, Sherry can't believe that lemonades in LA cost $8. And she's like, I guess we're not in Kentucky anymore. <laughs> yeah, Bob. Oh, here, uh, you want to cruise? Take a ride a little bit. <laughs> oh my God. Brittany's yucks were the worst today and she's just getting worse by this she literally is just walking around going, oh, hoo, oh, hoo, oh, hoo, oh, i love fires we know you love fairs <laughs> are you opening your own fair why is every week a circus theme on this show the first week was the the party that they had that was a fair theme last week they went to the circus and this year they're at another fair oh well i guess this is the farmer's market but it has a Close fair vibe. enough you need yeah. to bring the farmer's market into it we get it you're southern <laughs> okay so now they're talking about dad's mom out and mom's nine out and britney's like hey dad, hey boys not go with the dad's not out and he's like uh it was pretty fucked up you know so i told you i invited alex you know and i talked to luke when i got there and he was like why would i give this guy a chance you know like why would i be one of friend be friends with x my girlfriend you know she's like yeah well chris and they are talking to jasmine and zach and i feel like i was in the middle trying to take off for you and blew he's like where sorry i shouldn't say i shouldn't say blow around you i know better it blew up it's what i'm trying to say yeah and she was like are you kidding me i don't want my ex-boyfriend around me or my fucking family like what is so fucking difficult for him to understand like i turned into a whole thing <laughs> flashback and Brittany's like jokes Kristen uh, Jake's is just trying to help you Kristen <laughs> <laughs> you know Kristen starts bringing up that Janet told Jasmine that Michelle was racist and a Republican and all this scrap and I was like wait what 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 happened <laughs> I know. Kristen said that Janet told Jasmine that Michelle was I was like I had to go back just a few times just to get the sentence straight in my head so now we see a flashback and Kristen's going, what? What are they starting up? Huh? The truth that Janet told you that Michelle is like probably a Republican and like she's probably racist. Like that's the shit that Janet was saying. So, you know, the shoulder hitting her on the head. I mean, poor Kristen. <laughs> I'm surprised that she can even still hear after knocking herself right in the ear bone with that fucking shoulder all these years. Yeah, and and here then, she is. And then we see Jasmine getting up and being like, fuck you. And she's like, you know, Kristen, I swear to God, you are not. Look at me. You are not going to say that Janet told me she's a racist. And then and then Brittany's like, oh, I never saw that. I never <laughs> saw that. Oh, my God. Is this a marble rolling pin? This is amazing. I never saw that, Michelle. <laughs> Jack's like, that's, that's not going to fly. Like... That's definitely not going to fly. By the way, I mean, what are the odds that Jax is a, cl a closet Republican? He definitely is, right? So, oh my God, a hundred percent, right? You know, I don't, I don't think that he probably pays enough attention to politics <laughs> to really know. But I think he's one of those who's like, you know what? I'm not voting for the guy, but I love a real straight shooter like, <laughs> like Trump. Just saying, just saying, guys, just saying. I think he's. I think there, there's a part of it that he would vote for Trump just because he's he's angling for a Celebrity Apprentice to come back someday. <laughs> he's like, I know yeah. it's gonna come back. I want to be ready for it, man. <laughs> so Brittany's like, she's like, well, I wonder how Michelle's feeling today after she brought that up in her own home and say that about her. Somebody got called a Republican in their own home. You're from Kentucky. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Where's Brittany acting like she's never met a Republican before? Hilarious. <laughs> By the way, notice Sherry's staying real quiet. She's like, Mom, go, walk over there with your $8 <laughs> limits. We're about to talk about Republicans, okay? <laughs> now, I don't want you coming in here and being a Republican. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So now we go to Jesse and Michelle's house. Michelle's like, I haven't slept. You have no idea what happened last night. Like the first time in my life I've ever heard my name associated with these words. She said, Janet said Michelle is a racist and a Republican. <laughs> and Jesse's like, racist and Republican? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who should we tackle first? I mean, meanwhile, why do they way, have to be together? Meanwhile, we're like three seconds in the episode. I was like, what is going on in this episode already? Like, we are just launched into this. This so, is the most L.A. fight ever, though. <laughs> oh, my God. Somebody called you a Republican. They're like, in your home? In your own home? <laughs> You're going to have to go away for a while. <laughs> um. So Michelle's like, yeah, I'm still shocked, to be honest with you. I'm like, completely shocked and jesse's like what what the fuck is wrong with her calling you a republican oh my god <laughs> she's like i i just don't know what's even wrong with her and then isabella is like um calm down don't say fuck and they're like you don't say fuck she's like fuck you mom <laughs> and um jesse's like sorry i keep saying fuck around you but it's in my vocabulary all right now if you'd fucking have paid attention to your fucking tricycle maybe i wouldn't be this angry <laughs> fucking brat we got you some fucking training wheels you didn't even fucking use them you fucking little stupid little three-year-old so michelle's like um we have a daughter we don't say that word you can't say that anymore because then she starts saying it and she's like he's like Shh, no we don't say that word she goes but you say it every day <laughs> and he's like i know i know but when you do it it's funny but when i do it it's wrong so michelle's just basically super upset because janet wouldn't say that or else she wouldn't be her friend if she was really racist and Republican. And hello, I'm the one that's first generation Mexican and first generation Persian. Okay, well, you can still be racist. You can I still be racist as hell. <laughs> that's not a joke. I, I feel like that is such a thing of the past few years where people are like, guess what? Um, BLM, I'm a POC. It's like, uh, you're half Mexican. What are you fucking talking about? It's not the same thing. Like, everybody is trying to just lump each other it's like everybody's trying to get off in these social arguments by saying i'm a poc it's like you're an american 80 percent of us are a little bit something it doesn't mean you can't be racist and ignorant okay can we just yeah. stop this everybody across the board i it's don't know like, i'm mad at everybody now. it's like that book everybody poops everyone can be a little racist everyone yeah, or the can do song it. from south or the song from avenue q everyone's a little bit racist sometimes mm -hmm. but in this case though um she is just like i i think what she's trying to say is i understand what it's like to be judged by the color of your skin or from what group you're in so i would never do that to someone else which by the way also is also can true. still do that <laughs> yeah by the way um so uh jesse's like well you should call janet and be like did you fucking say this you fucking little fuck fuck sorry isabella so she does she michelle face on janet and she's like hi do you have a minute i have a super important question and i want you to be completely honest about it Kristen said that you think that I'm like a racist and a Republican, so... <laughs> and she's like, what? Okay, that's like complete like bullshit to throw around an accusation like that. I need to have a conversation with her because that makes me like furious with her. Like that word and like your name has never come out of my mouth at the same time sentence okay never i have to put up a boundary with Kristen. okay so she goes into this story by the way her eyebrows are distracting i just had to say it. i normally want to leave people alone because i feel like she's pregnant like she doesn't she doesn't need me coming for her eyebrows but they're <laughs> distracting me um so anyway back to this she's very upset because she's been close to Kristen for years and she had to put up a boundary because her relationship with alex was so fucking crazy and it was making her crazy and so the second she put up a boundary which means i don't want to hear your shit for three hours a day we've all yeah. had to put up that boundary Kristen turned on her i was like oh really you're not my friend oh really you chose alex oh really and just you know shouldered herself into the ear enough that she was psychotic about it right um and so now she says like anytime that Kristen has the opportunity to kind of throw me under the bus she does which by the way if we go back to that party wasn't Kristen didn't just like 
come out and be like, hey, guys, I want to tell you all something. Wasn't it Brittany who was like, have you been trying to stir up some trouble? And Brittany kind of actually pushed that out into the fore, right? If you think yeah, about but it. Yeah, Kristen was the one telling them so that they would bring it out on camera, <laughs> right? I mean, who knows? So, uh, ja- I just want to say, like, I just want to make sure Brittany gets hit with this stick a little bit, too. You know, that's all. Not trying to unstick Kristen, but let's get a little bit on Britney too. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Hungry Root is your partner in healthy living. It's the easiest way to get fresh, high-quality groceries and simple, healthy recipes delivered to your door. Take a fun, short quiz, and Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like to eat, the kitchen appliances you use, and more. And then they'll build you a personalized cart with all your grocery needs for the week and give you delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to good use. Hungry Root will recommend recipes and groceries based on your personal taste, but each order is fully customizable. I really enjoy actually doing that quiz i really felt like something was being customized to my needs and my wants and the box that came for me i got so many really helpful meals and also snacks i can't tell you how many times i was starving in the middle of the day and i was like oh my goodness i actually have a snack that i can reach for including a stroop waffle by the way everything from hungry root follows a simple standard it's got to taste good be quick to make and contain whole trusted ingredients Right now, Hungry Root is offering Watch What Crappens listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash Crappens to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash Crappens. Don't forget to use our link so they know that we sent you. If you like a good murder mystery story, you'll love June's Journey, a free hidden object mobile game where Detective June Parker unravels the mystery of her sister's death. Travel back to the beautifully illustrated 20s, find clues, discover hidden objects, and watch the story unfold with new chapters released weekly. Put your detective skills to the test. Download June's Journey on Android or iOS or play online via Facebook games. So uh, Janet is like, this is like, this is like a whole new low even for Kristen and Michelle goes. And it's interesting for her to say that and you, when you're like the only person there that night, like you're the only one who's not there that night. And she said that about you, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Michelle's like, yeah, I don't even know what happened. Um, And then the boys night went out, Alex was there. So, you know, she's triggered. And then um, Janet's like, well, that's very typical for Kristen. And what I think is that she doesn't want Alex's side of their breakup shared. So now she's saying, because Kristen's opinion on Alex changed pretty quickly because she met Luke and suddenly made herself the victim in this relationship when Janet heard all about this relationship and Kristen was crazy in this relationship, but then once she got dumped and couldn't freeload off the guy anymore, then it changed to he's a narcissist. And she started using all the the code word, you know, the uh, right. What would you call them? Like the social the buzzwords, pop psychology buzzwords. Yeah, pop psychology buzzword. You well, know, she, yeah. She was like, uh, like as soon as she got with Luke, all of a sudden Alex became like a narcissist, and he was awful. Da 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 da. Which, by the way, I do think like if you are with someone who's shitty, and then you are with someone who's actually much better. You are, you do sometimes get hindsight, like, wait a second, I have just been with a piece of shit all this time. So, like, I'm, I'm okay with Kristen having a little bit of a pivot there. But that being said, we do know that she's probably the one. Who I'm like, I, listen, I'm not, I, I like Kristen. I'm glad to see her back on TV, you know, in a way, even though that's probably problematic to say in itself. But listen, I'm enjoying Kristen. I'm giving her no leeway here because it's fucking Kristen. And I'm not going to forget. The Kristen is Kristen, okay? Yeah. And this guy, Alex, I think everyone's mean to him because he's not, like, the hottest guy. He's, like, this big, tall, oafy guy who probably didn't bathe before he came to the circus night or whatever. And, you know, like, just looks sloppy playing skee-ball. No one likes a sloppy Mm skee-baller. And I think that everyone's being mean to him because he's not hot. And, you know, maybe we don't know what Alex has going on i mean according to alex Kristen got rid of her house because she was broke as hell and then just moved in and freeloaded off of him and stuff so maybe that ended and Kristen got mad i don't know i tend to be on Kristen's side more because i know her through the you know know her from the show or whatever but um it's Kristen, so i'm not going to put all my bets down on the table yet so janet says 
that like I think like as soon as Kristen heard that the guys were with Alex and without her, she pulled something insane out of her ass. Like she says, like I feel like you and I are both collateral damage in that, and it's not cool. I but Kristen wasn't like, oh, you decided like Jazz decided to stir up shit by inviting my ex to ha- like to basically to confront Luke with my ex at 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 guys night. Kristen didn't then say, well, guess what? Let me tell you this, Michelle. Again, it was Brittany who said, and Kristen, you've been stirring up a lot of shit because Kristen was like, Brittany, that is so fucked up of Jax. I can't believe Jax is doing that. And You're Brittany right, was yeah. the one who was like, oh, well, you know, I'll talk about fucked up. Look at what you did. And so she's mm-hmm. the one who kind of like brought this to the fore when it wasn't even on the table You're as right, part yeah. of this fight. And you know what makes Brittany even worse in this situation? She was she was throwing Kristen under the bus when it was really her friend, Zach, who started this shit. That's true. And she was trying to protect Zach by throwing Kristen under the That's bus. That's what I'm I saying I mean, Brittany, here. really, she's like a multifaceted monster. Yeah, I'm not saying that Kristen is any angel by any means, but I, I feel like, like they really are, um, like, this is Brittany. This is a Brittany and Zach issue. But can I also say, while we're calling everybody trash five minutes into this, it's also Janet. And I don't believe for one second that Janet didn't say this. I 100% believe that Janet did yeah. say this. And guess what? I also believe that she's correct and that Michelle is a fucking Trumper and did say things that made her think that. I think that they're all lying and they're, they're having like a typical L.A. fight, which is like you are not allowed to talk about how you really feel or <laughs> <laughs> how I really feel, I guess. You know, like how your friends, like, how dare you say how I really felt to a bunch of people that could cancel me? You know, well, I mean, that's yeah. what they're all fighting about. But I believe all of them. I believe Janet said it. I believe that she thinks it. And I think that whatever Michelle said to make her think it, Michelle said too. Yeah, because Janet basically tries to soften it later on, as we'll get into, by saying, no, 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 no. I never said that she was a Republican and racist. It's just that she seemed to be in favor of Florida's don't say gay laws. Yeah, she just <laughs> and hates gay and trans people. I think What's she just got like, swept up in a logarithm. I was like, well, if you think she just got swept up in a logarithm and it was just that, then why are you going and telling people, like, oh, my God, she doesn't like that. She's, like, the all algorithm. for, like, Ron DeSantis. And so. so, like, I yeah. don't know. Something's going, something's going on. Here and I love group. that in a don't say gay fight, they're blaming the gay. <laughs> the whole the, point is you don't believe in saying the gay. So leave the gay out of it. How are you not going to be, how are you, how are you going to be in favor of don't say gay laws, but then you're going to pin everything on the gay? This is well, so hypocritical, this whole fight. But also like Bravo literally does don't say gay because uh, Zach is such a big part of this. And they, again, they cut out the entire fight from the show. They cut out Zach's big moment and they really don't center him in this at all. When actually the things that Michelle said, potential like th- what she allegedly said really that's that should be something that is like very offensive to, to zach it should be very offensive to fucking everyone well i know but in the context decency, of this... and nobody says anything about it to her she's the big victim that that's what makes me crazy okay we're jumping way way ahead so let's come back to this part and by the way i know i was the one who did it but it's let's fine. come back to, when i say let's i mean me uh let's come back to what's going on right now which is janet refusing to take any responsibility so now janet when she gets confronted is like well Kristen's insane and here's why she's insane because of her boyfriend she's trying to she's trying to put forth lies about her boyfriend and wants us all to swallow these lies about her boyfriend right but also don't forget i mean i'm not trying to defend everyone here it's just that this is another lazy lazy susan of awfulness on this show but janet is also receiving this information like Kristen showed up at this at this night and just decided I'm going to like, just talk shit about Janet. And that wasn't what happened. Oh, I mean, and by the way, thanks a lot, Bravo, because you didn't show it to us. So we have no idea really the context of how it truly came out. But, um, so well, I think Janet- that's why they're going to save it up for later. They're going to like slow, slow drip it. Ugh, it's just ridiculous. Did their cameras yeah. die or something like that? I don't know. No, they're, it's all there. They're going to slow drip it to us over the season. It's like the one- this is some good shit. Like, listen, I'm not asking for more supersized episodes, but here's the one time where they could have used a supersized episode. And they're like, mm, no, we're not going to do it. It's like, really? Yeah. And then, you know, in like two weeks, we'll get a supersized episode so we can watch, you know, 10 minutes of Britney walking around Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> There's a bobbin. I wish I knew about this place before I had my wedding. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, Michelle's like, yeah, I've known Kristen for a couple of years, and she had problems, and she broke up with her ex-boyfriend, 
And then I had problems with Jesse. And so we would talk about our problems together. And then that's how we bonded. But this is how she repays me. It's like, well, listen, what does she owe you for? She had to listen to your stories about fucking Jesse. I know. I would say you're pretty even. Okay. Jesse doesn't seem like such a prince over Alex. Yeah, exactly. So Jesse, so she gets off the phone and Jesse's like, and by the way, what does being a Republican have to do with it? She goes, yeah, like I'm not a Republican, which by the way, even if I am, who gives a fuck? <laughs> and then, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we then go to Kristen's apartment and Kristen and Luke are packing up her apartment because they are moving down the hall from Katie. Cause as discussed on Vanderpump rules recap, She's in the same building as Katie. And someone actually said that this Kristen talked about it on a podcast. So it has been verified now. Um, so Kristen's like, oh, I am so ready to have a new space. And he's like, yeah, let's fill a couple more boxes and get over there. Can't wait to break in the new apartment too, huh? God, Luke, I swear to God, I've literally got dish towels that are more interesting. But mostly because I had to buy those dish towels with funny Southern sayings on them. Like the only normal people you know are the ones you don't know too well. <laughs> hey, I, I'm going to stop caring what people think. I hope that's okay with you. I'm like, yes, I love cleaning the kitchen now. I love a sassy kitchen clean. Okay, here's what I wanted to say. Um, I finally figured out who Luke is. Who? He is Clay Aiken on testosterone therapy. With, with he maybe is a doll. A- he's, a, he's Clay Aiken. With like facial hair implanted on his face. Wow. And no one can convince me otherwise. This is Clay Aiken in disguise, barely disguised. Do you feel like there's like a little Ross Perot in there too? Like young Ross Perot. In the future, for sure. He's definitely (laughs) going down that path. (laughs) He's got, you know what? There's no U turns on that road. (laughs) That is a road with no U turns. Maybe Gary you started down that road. I love that you're only going to go with politicians now. I'm going to go with go uh, from politicians Clay who have long Aiken. shot campaigns. I'm like Ronnie Clay Aiken. Actually, well, Clay Aiken is a politician. He did run for office. That's right. Oh, my so gosh. If you took Clay Aiken, Ross Perot, Gary Kucinich, and um, I don't know. Is there is there any other like really good like sh- like strange also rant Jill Stein, <laughs> Carly Fiorina? Okay, so <laughs> Meg Whitman. <laughs> While we're Meg talking Whitman. about people Meg. who look like people, I would like to put this uh, image up on screen of Gladys Kravitz from the film <laughs> Bewitched, so we can all talk about how much this looks like Zach giving everybody dirty looks. It does look like Zach. It also looks like me watching the show. <laughs> all right uh, okay so anyway we, gays, we just have the same looks you know <laughs> so um chris uh looks like can't wait to break in the new apartment and she's like you mean have sex in a bed <laughs> he's like yeah that's <laughs> what i meant by that so they bring uh they're talking on the floor and she t- she shows us her new fancy apartment and she's like and there's room to play in here because like we even have sex toys we've got like five boxes of sex toys so, like <laughs> and she's like um don't you think these knobs will be cute i love that she's like really concerned about knobs he's like yeah sure honey whatever you want she's like, you know what would make me happy is jack stop pulling fucking jack shit last night like we literally just had this talk where i said i don't care if you're friends with my ex-boyfriend just please don't bring him around me and don't bring him around luke or like my family or my new knobs and then we see a flashback of uh that conversation at the smokehouse and luke is like yeah, the only saving grace of the night was that he pulled me aside first. And like, if I, it, it would have been a total blindside and that would have been totally shitty, man. Man, don't even say blind because that's the best thing anybody could have been around you that night with that shirt on. Okay. I'm never <laughs> going to forget that shirt that he wore ever. I'm never going to forget it and I'm never going to forgive it. So Kristen's like, I was so fucking upset when Brittany told me. I was like backed into a corner and then guess what? I fucking reacted. And that's just what I did. For Jax to do that, I mean, it's just fake. And Jax promised me he wasn't going to pull this shit. So if he's going to pull shit like that, then I'm going to start calling people out on their bullshit. Okay, well, how does that make any sense? Call Jax out on his bullshit. How does yeah. Jax not have any bullshit for you to call him out on? 
Yeah, exactly. And so Kristen says, like, you know what? I brought up what Zach told us. So we see a flashback of Kristen saying, like, well, guess what? I found out that Janice said that Michelle's a racist and a Republican. And she's like, the truth. <laughs> and Jasmine's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Would I be sitting right here if Janet told me that? That's Zach. That's Zach. So Jasmine gets pissed. Okay, so then I realized Jasmine I know who Jasmine is. I recapped her season of The Bachelor over on Rose Prick. She was on Nick Vile's season of The uh -huh. Bachelor. Isn't that crazy? I knew it. <laughs> I knew huge I recognized character. her. No, you know why? You know how I always tell that story about the time that Lala was on the pool at my roof in my old building? Jasmine was with her. It all comes together. I knew it. I knew it. It was her. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. So it's Jasmine there you was go. the one. Jasmine was there. And you know what? For all I know, maybe I mean I don't think Zach was there. I know that it was a gay. I think it was um, other Logan though. But I, that was when Lala was talking about Faith and how Faith was like stealing shit and like how um, she said, "Let the peasants be peasants." That's that was Lala talking about Faith. I'm not gonna hang out with Faith anymore. Let the peasants be peasants. I just will always remember her saying that at the pool. It was Jasmine who she said it to. You gotta love when someone's calling someone peasant at the apartment pool. I know that you don't hilarious. even live in. <laughs> it's my peasant pool. <laughs> I love calling people peasants at this non-privately owned pool. <laughs> so, um, Kristen. Okay, so we see the flashback, and Jasmine's now pissed at Kristen. And Kristen's like, uh, yeah, okay, well, here's what happened. Before production started, there was a lot of shit talking going on, like, within our group, all right? And then everyone's going to, like, talk about it behind closed doors. But then when filming starts, nobody wants to talk about it. So, like, I mean, sorry, so, but the cameras were up, and, you know, we're going to just pretend it didn't happen. Well, I'm not going to pretend. And then she does her little shimmy thing where she's, like, shrugging and shimming at the same time <laughs> justice so she's like she's like janet was like trying to start a bunch of shit by insinuating that michelle could be homophobic or racist and then last night zach fully denied it and i just had enough i feel like i upset michelle by saying that like oh really you feel like you upset That's michelle crazy. by saying that people in the groups think that she's like a racist and a republican <laughs> So she says that Zach's pissed off at her, but he knows better when it's a Janet thing because she had to come for Janet. And deep down, Zach told her because he really wanted her to light the fire and she knows it. And I just think it's so funny because Kristen's the most experienced in reality TV and these people really don't. I saw a tweet that said something like, Kristen is well trained and these people stand no chance against her. And it is just so true. I mean, Kristen and Jax are just going to run ramshot over these people. And I love to watch it. Well, it's also, I love my favorite thing is when reality stars do this. And Whitney on Salt Lake City is the biggest offender. Oh, yeah. Well, Zach just wanted me to light the fire. It's like, well, and then you did. <laughs> he, she manipulated me. She wanted me to say that. It's like, and you did. And so don't act it. like you it's like it's like oh I knew all along they just wanted me to to you know throw a table or something like that knock a table over and then you knock a table over so why are you mad at them you're the one who actually did it yeah well you know what I would say you know in a Weight Watchers after a bad week those M Ms were flirting with me okay and you know what Janelle would say excuses don't burn calories <laughs> and I hope they were peanut M Ms <laughs> at least they've got protein God, I was eating it's like you were there. M &Ms. I it's was eating like some this week there. and I was like, I feel like I hear Ronnie's, I feel like I hear Janelle from Ronnie's Weight Watcher <laughs> trauma in my ear. <laughs> Apparently it wasn't trauma. What a, what a great time. Drama. Maybe. So yeah, I loved it. So, um, let's see. Uh, so Kristen's like, well, I didn't mean to, oh, Luke's saying, well, the best thing to do, Kristen, is when somebody tells you something, maybe don't tell everybody. Yeah, thanks, Luke. <laughs> but I love that here's, Luke's here to Luke explain simple things to us all. So I don't like Luke, by the way. Can you tell? I don't know why. He's done nothing to me. So Kristen's like, oh, I didn't mean to weaponize it, but I did. Oh. <laughs> so. I'm Kakari. Uh, <laughs> Kakari. So now we go over to Danny and Nia's condo, and uh, Nia is like instructing Danny how to feed her pre pumped milk into the child because uh, she's going to go overnight somewhere. Because she's going to be, it's like she's going on like a cruise or something. So she's like, So are you ready for me to leave? And she's like, uh, Yeah, I mean, how much milk do you have <laughs> from the actual teat? 
Um, so I, I, I want her to do it like every night, like every other bottle formula and like breast milk. Fam, da Daniel, are you listening to me? You should do it the frost two to four bags at a time. And he's like, oh man, it's like typical, like, oh man, I'm a man. I don't understand how to feed a baby right now. Why do humans get to brag that we're like the most advanced species on earth when we're such fucking pussies when we're born? I mean, seriously, you have to chain a lady up to a pumping machine for months at a time. She can't even go out of town because we can't do shit on our own. Have you ever seen a baby elephant get born? Here's what the mom does. It walks past the camera, because that's the only time I've seen this on TikTok. The lady walks <laughs> past the camera, literally just stops like she's about to burp, splurts out a baby. And guess what the baby does? It gets up and starts fucking walking i think human beings need to stop bragging because we're ridiculous okay and I, yes i'm talking to you you I'm talking to all of you three under two <laughs> wussies <laughs> but the worst is when that baby elephant gets stuck under a couch and then sherry just comes running out of nowhere it's like where is he <laughs> starts putting white lipstick all over the, the elephant's trunk <laughs> so nia so we find out about nia yeah, she's going to, yeah, she's going to be working. Host me as USA. I'm very blessed to be able to continue to do appearances. Wow. Have yeah. fun with that. So yeah. um, he's got to take care of the kids. So I hope we get like a wacky Mr. Mom episode. Danny scares me. He seems like Danny and Nia seem like they have the most loving relationship. They're really sweet to each other. They're always like going in for little kisses and it doesn't feel like it's performative. But then sometimes when you look at Danny, it's like, I feel like his eyes are just black circles. Like I'm like, I don't even, I feel like I don't even see any of like the white part. It's just like, I feel like yeah. his eyes are like pools of evil sometimes. And I'm like, I don't know if I trust this man. Everything He's he does exhausted. seems nice, but every, but he, there's something scary about his eyes, right? Well, here's what it is, and I don't want to offend anybody. So just if you're easily offended, just don't listen to this next part. So I think it's because he's short. And, you know, when you're really short, everybody's taller than you. And so you're constantly in the shadows. And so I think his pupils get really big because he thinks it's darker than, than taller people. <laughs> you know what? That's a very sound theory. Thank you for reminding me of short people shadow short theory. theory. <laughs> that, um, Yeah. I love, by the way, every week for some reason, this is like the nicest <laughs> couple. They're the, they're the, like the most pleasant people and they're the most mature. And I've already called her a monster. And now I say that he has evil lurking behind his eyes. But let me tell you something. I got to back myself on this. I got to back yourself, you back know? yourself up. So, um, the other thing is that he plays a zombie, the, well, even the, just the voice of a zombie. So now I can see zombie in him. Mm. You know what I mean? You yeah. know how when you see a zombie, you see the character they were before the zombie a little bit? Because they're the same person. You know, they're just zombified. That's mm. what he is to me. So he is kind of scary. Um, so now we go over to Jax. Yeah. Jax is... Um, going to Jax's, which uh, looks maybe about the size of a shoebox. I'm Did, not really sure. Who was, is it a taco truck? What are they opening? Who was telling me, was I with you? Who was I talking to? Who said that Jax's is kind of like a ghost kitchen or it's like, that's another restaurant and there's like a little back area that they opened up that they just call Jax's, but it's part of like a larger restaurant. Were we talking to um, someone about yes. that? Uh, someone told us that on another podcast. We were talking to a podcaster, I think that went, because we I was with you. So whoever yeah. told us, Who it was. We, which podcast were we just on? <laughs> um, we just did the big flop and we just talked we to somebody talk else too, but I don't remember. But yeah, well, someone was telling us it's, it's a ghost kitchen. There's a place next door. Mm. Um, no, it was on crappy hour, maybe. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe that's ghost what it kitchen. was. Yeah. Play, I also heard a rumor. Hour. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Shaw listen to crappy hours. So you get the information. Not that we listen to it because we have no idea what we're fucking talking about. I have no idea. I don't know what we've been talking about for the past 20 minutes, to be honest. I'm like, also, <laughs> neither does anybody. I heard a rumor that something about her, the sandwich shop was ghost, it was using ghost kitchens around the country to be sold on Uber. Like, yeah, sandwiches were too. selling uh, something about her sandwiches on Uber Eats. Is that true? Have you heard that? Uh, no, I just saw that like on an Instagram comment. Uh, hmm. Well, but you know who heard it? <laughs> hey, that is not true, Michelle. 
<laughs> Guys, I want to tell you a secret. It just stays between the two of us. Something about her selling sandwiches on Uber Eats across the nation. But not to gay people or races. <laughs> Michelle says just she doesn't general. want those sandwiches because they're made by people who support gay rights. They're they're selling so so. There's something about Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Penny made a special sandwich. It's all it's, it looks like a MAGA cap, but instead it's just a tomato caprese. <laughs> Commercials. Here comes one right now. At Amica Insurance, we know it's more than just a car or a house. It's the four wheels that get you where you're going, and the four walls that welcome you home. When you combine auto and home insurance with Amica, we'll help protect it all. And the more you cover, the more you can save. Amica, empathy is our best policy. Okay, so then we go over to Jax's and he's got a little golf cart that he pulls up to and um, he's hitting garbage cans because he's Jax, you know? <laughs> So uh, he's like, guys, what do you think of the flower wall? What do you think of the flower wall? Brutal, brutal, honest opinion, guys. <laughs> I love a brutal, honest opinion about a flower wall. <laughs> yeah. They're like, looks great. Looks great, Jax. Wow, love it. Love it. He's like, yeah, I need to pop a little bit more. You know, it looks like <sighs> I thought it was going to be like more three dimensional, but like, that's fine. Like, we're okay. What's going on? Where, where are we at? <sighs> so then Roger is like, okay, we got some interviews lined up. So we need to have some really, really good workers for this hole in the wall bar. So Jack's like, I've been a bartender like the majority of my life. And, you know, I had some really crazy, crazy years at Sir, And I'm really very fortunate to where I don't have to put up a bunch of money because I've got three partners that are footing the bill. And uh, I personally haven't invested anything. I'm like, then it's not your it's not your bar, Jax. <laughs> it's not your bar. And thank you for admitting that. You dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> what what ownership stake do you have in this bar then? <laughs> yeah. So probably like this 2% or something. He's probably got like a Tom and Tom kind of a deal. So uh, then we see a clip of Jax being a totally professional bartender where some girl's like, can I have a mojito? And he's like, I'm not muddling today. <laughs> and then he drops an entire bottle of Don Julio. <laughs> so he's like, actually, to be honest, Bars destroy marriages, you know? Not like, look at the Toms. No, bars don't destroy marriages. Bad men destroy men. The, yeah. the, the, men you're the marriages you're talking about on this show are terrible fucking men, okay? The same thing that's going to destroy your marriage. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I, I mean, I saw all the problems that they went through, and I just, I want to make sure that, that I didn't run into any of those problems, because, like, I, so I have to involve my wife, because I think I should be in charge of hiring the staff, and Brittany, like, you could take the plant wall. I'm just imagining all those plants being like little shop of horrors. And they're all going, yeah, yikes. Find my yikes. Find my giant yikes. Find my own. So um, I love that he's saying he's going to give Brittany something to do at this part. Please don't. <laughs> and I love how con I mean how condescending he's like I want to give her a sense of ownership so she can like what are the plants on the wall <laughs> and they're not even real plants it's a painting of a flower on the wall of flowers by the way <laughs> so then um, they she's, interview she's so gonna be up there with a watering can pouring water on the painting yeah. oh, it's gonna grow Jax yes, you gotta give these flowers love <laughs> so then we see them interviewing people and of course the way that Jax is looking these girls up and down with the yeah. hungry eyes of a balding wolf is just uh, <laughs> a balding well, wolf. who would marry Jax I mean Brittany like on I hate saying people deserve what they get but honestly it's like you order uh, you ordered the sandwich <laughs> that came to you you know what I mean he's disgusting <laughs> this guy he's fucking disgusting is my point I will never get her I have to say I love this show that he created love it God, I still hate him so much. I hate him. But I love I love that he's back on TV, but I hate his gut so much. I guess that's the point, right? Yeah. I mean, he did the smartest thing Jax ever did was make sure that Jesse was on this show. So that way Jax looks like semi-decent in comparison. 
Hmm. So we see this uh, a lady come in to interview, and they only show like very fleetingly, but she has no bra on. Like we see like a little nip coming through. So of course we know she's gonna get the job. Jax is like his boner is like lifting up his table, like his table's up at his nose because his boner is lifting up so high. And uh, yeah, she uh, he's like this gal decided not to wear a bra. So did we end up hiring her? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So they hire they hire her. Um, so then, uh, she does like a test drink and it's a lemon drop. So, you know, she's, she's serious. It's basically like a mixology place. <laughs> it's basically, it's basically the same as Tom Tom. Yeah. So then, uh, Brittany meets up with Kristen to make up for, okay. So Brittany and Kristen meet up and they have mm-hmm. to talk about this and they meet up at a horchacheria, which is so yes. funny because when you're not in the Valley, they go to juice places where they have to drink like grasshopper jizz. And then you go over to the valley and that's where you get the real fucking sweet, delicious 900 calorie <laughs> drinks. I'm moving to the valley. That's it. I'd love it there. This show is how, do, how many people do you think are going to move to the valley after watching this show? Um, I think it's Besides just gonna, me. Uh, I, I think that like uh, it, it'll just be just like a surge a search a wave of people are going to move there all the hipsters are just going to just say we are coming in to Reseda. we mm-hmm. are taking over chatsworth and we will Reseda, that's where bueller's from really uh, it's my hometown Reseda. yep oh, wasn't that in like free fallen Isn't that lyric in free fallen about Reseda? Reseda? I don't know. Um, so um, it's where my hair has been living for years. <laughs> okay, so Kristen is like, oh my god, this like smells like a this like churro smells like a Christmas candle that you would have. Because of course, Brittany. See, and I don't like Brittany, but this is how she orders, which makes me kind of like her. Can we have some mini churros? <laughs> I'm like, you're having horchata and churros. That's my kind of girl. <laughs> Yeah, so Kristen's like, yeah, this smells like a Christmas candle. It's like, cut to Kristen actually eating a Christmas candle. It's like, you're doing it, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was for the center base. <laughs> so uh, Brittany's like, so how are you feeling? Because she still has that frown. That fr- Brittany with her frown, her surgically induced frown is making me cackle every single scene. Because now she has to like overcompensate for the frown by being extra cheery to, to Prove to people that she's not frowning. She's like, so how are you feeling? Like? She's just like leaning on a churro to make it look like she's smiling. <laughs> she's like, oh, I hate the way you fail. <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed. Oh, because that girl's not kind of took a turn. Bad turn, obviously. I mean, Jan is really, really, really pissed off right now. Anti. <laughs> And she was like, at who? She was at you, because, you know, everybody called her and told her that you basically said that Michelle was a racist. And she's like, I didn't say that. Or Republican or whatever. Me, out of all people, really? Seriously? Seriously? You think this is a topic that I want to talk about ever? And she was well, that was my point. I was like, why is Kristen even bringing this up? I mean, that's like her going after people's faith. <laughs> you know, it really sucks to have a word that's so hurtful, even be affiliated with your name. But I repeated what was told to me. So something that Janet said. So why the fuck is everybody mad at me? So she's like, listen, I was just backed into a corner. So that's why I spat it out. <laughs> she's like, it is, like, well, she's like, that word is I'm such glad a hurtful you're... word. That is such a terrible word to be associated with you. But you backed me in a corner. So, of course, I lobbed it at you. Yeah. <laughs> So I had to do it. <laughs> so uh, Brittany's like, well, I'm glad you're owning up to that. Yeah, yeah. And um, so she's like, you know, I don't think that Kristen does anything on purpose to hurt people. She just does sometimes. She's like Jake's in that way. Yeah. I don't know if Janet is actually the one who's saying these things or not. But like so it, it, like something will say it. And Kristen exaggerated like Jax would. Jax does this all the time. You know, boys will be boys. <laughs> and so Kristen's like, this Zach stuff is what's really fucking me up. And she goes, well, you got to talk to him because he's like, he's getting like dumpster fire real fast. <laughs> he tried to take off his hair and <laughs> knock us all down with it right in a row. <laughs> He's literally wearing a mini dumpster on his head now. So, um, and then he put his hair on top of that. So, Kristen's like, Kristen calls Zach because they're gonna ha- hash it all out. And so she's like, "Hey, I'm with Brett. You're on speaker." He's like, "Hey, what's up? Hi, honey. Okay, I'm wildly confused why you are denying the stuff that you told me, Kaka." 
He's like, what part are we referring to? She's like, yeah. Well, Janet told Jasmine that Lily Lolly, that Michelle Lolly, <laughs> sorry, Lily Janet Lolly. told Jasmine that Michelle Lolly, I like that. Michelle Lolly, they say it 10 more times now. Michelle Lolly <laughs> being a Republican and that she should be careful. And Zach's like, well, the Republican thing was sad, but that doesn't mean racism, Kristen. And I never said that. You cannot do that, Kristen. And she goes, well, why would I use the fucking R word unless that's what you said to me? So don't throw me under the bus. And goes, oh my God, Kristen, you're the bus driver. <laughs> you're the one driving over all the dead bodies well how did they die in the first place by the way zach <laughs> yeah. you're twisting everything like i'm not saying that there wasn't something that happened but like what you did was like you took something that was like very simple that i was like talking about behind the scenes because i was like oh that's weird you don't just like blurt out that stuff and accuse somebody of saying that someone's racist like that i'm like well so you did say the racist thing <laughs> Exactly. And he said it. Well, we'll learn why he said it. But um, so then Kristen, well, he's saying, oh, you know what? Kristen cannot keep a secret to save her life. <gasps> like, even when I'm telling her, do not tell this person. I'm telling you this because you're my friend and I want you to know, but I need you to keep it to you. She never once has been able to keep a secret. Not even one single time. Then why are you telling I mean, her? Are you you're telling only lending credence to her theory that you told her because you wanted her to tell everybody. My favorite thing is when people who've been told a secret who then go and tell someone else a secret and then that person tells the secret gets mad that someone told their secret. They're like, the Zach, you anymore. know that it was that that <laughs> Janet told Brittany in this story and Brittany told you. You were the one who couldn't keep a secret and told Kristen, okay? <laughs> yeah, and Brittany's like, well, but the point is you brought it up at the party. And Kristen's like, yeah, well, rather than it being the point that you guys were all talking a bunch of shit and bringing it to my front door, and I was the only one to say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say, by the way, that, that Jana told Brittany the secret? I meant Jana told, what's her face? The girl from The Bachelor. What's her Janet name? told Jasmine. Jasmine. Right. I, and I, I, Jasmine I said Brittany and Jasmine. Told, I don't want people to be confused. Jasmine, Jasmine told Zach. Told Zach, Zach and told Zach Kristen. Told Kristen. And then yeah. now Zach is mad that Kristen couldn't keep a secret, even though Zach is the one who couldn't keep Jasmine's secret. Right. Um, okay. Well, rather than it being a point that you guys are all talking a bunch of shit, bring it to my front door, and I was the only one to say it out loud. I love when people do that, too, when they try to, like, they try to, like, uh, brand their messiness as some sort of, like, virtuous, uh, like, outburst of honesty, because no one else can be honest like they are. I'm just being honest, you know? Yeah. Uh, so and then uh, we <laughs> see a flashback to Kristen talking to Zach two days ago, and she says, I mean, I know the shit that Janet said about Michelle Lolly. Am I wrong? And he goes, you are not wrong, Kristen. <laughs> and they used this clip like five times this episode because it's so damning for Zach. And he's like, I never saw that. She's totally wrong. You are not wrong. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, Brittany uh, is like, well, I mean, you are the one who said it, and so you have to take some accountability for it. <laughs> and that's not what, that's how you're going to move on, unless you're Jax, in which case you don't have to make any accountability, because that's just what Jax does. <laughs> don't ask Jax to count nothing, because he does it wrong anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he don't got accountability. <laughs> So Kristen's like, okay, well, I said it out loud then. And the, the part that I took, and this is repeating it in front of everybody, was bad. She goes, yes, I'm glad you noticed, Kristen. She goes, okay, well, I can't deny the fact that I was told all of these things and it's been sitting inside me, literally bothering me. <laughs> literally bothering me. <laughs> I definitely feel like I hold a lot of responsibility to keep this group together because I love all these people. And I don't want to be like having issues because then how are we going to do country fire day again? <laughs> And Kristen just smiles, and she's like, something about summers, man, right? Makes everybody crazy. <laughs> Kristen's like, here we are, back again, just causing shit in the summertime, like old, like the I old know. days. It's L.A., it's always summertime here, let's be honest. So um, now we go to Michelle and Jesse having couples therapy with a non-therapist. So this guy, Scott, the life coach, he shows up, and he's like, okay, hey, everyone. How's everyone, fun how are you guys functioning together? And Jesse's like, um... You mean with like dum dum over here, this fucking bitch? <laughs> so um, he says that their th their counselor is not a therapist. He's more of a coach, and his goal is to make the best versions of themselves. And if the best versions of themselves are in love with each other, then their marriage will survive and get better. 
Yeah. And no. um, Michelle's like, yeah, Scott worked on our friend's marriage and that really improved and helped their marriage. So maybe it can help and improve our marriage too. And um, so they have spoken on the phone, but this is the first time they're meeting in person. So Scott's like, so how do you feel after the call? Do you guys feel like there's anything that came up after we talk? Like anything you want to revisit? Mm -hmm. And Jesse's like, I mean, it's just constant conflict and then we flash back to jesse berating michelle for putting too much milk in his cereal <laughs> he's a god such a conflict between cereal and milk and scott's like so what are your needs in this relationship that aren't being met and michelle's like um a lot of needs are like not being met the what a lot of needs i felt lonely for like a very long time he wouldn't even come to washington with me on january 6 so like raising a child can feel very lonely when you're not interacting with adults and especially a partner i just i get frustrated because he doesn't understand how i feel i'm no longer affectionate and he's not either i mean i just want him to rally <laughs> it's like i'm trying to get him into bed and i'm just like i leave little breadcrumbs i'm like follow the breadcrumbs follow the breadcrumbs <laughs> he says how can i make this better and i say do the research you know <laughs> do the real <laughs> i mean look i know it's a long road but we're not out of the james woods yet and the guy's like, so basically what you're saying is you're not getting any tenderness. And she's like, yeah, well, it's like the opposite. He's very hard on me, you know? Like, no matter what I do, nothing's enough. And he's so OCD on the house, you know? Like, he didn't. He doesn't he, even want to eat. He doesn't even. <laughs> he doesn't want the house to even look like we have kids in it. Or even me. He's actually removed all the photos of me. And he changed the locks. I have to Fred Flintstone to get inside. Do you know how many times I've had to watch Dino go into our house and lock me out? <laughs> um. So Jesse's like, well, everything she's saying, I'm just like, uh, like trying to figure out examples. Uh, like he's totally disconnected. He doesn't seem to have any feelings, and he's he very confused as to why he's even got to do this, right? Yeah. And he's like, so you don't. I'm hard on her. Like, who cares? You know, that's kind of his look. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out examples. And Scott's like, don't be a lawyer. Just sit with what you heard. <laughs> and Scott's like, well, she's walking on eggshells. And she, it's like, she's tiptoeing to everything. Oh, Scott's saying this. She has to, she's tiptoeing and saying everything has to be your way. And um, just, Jesse Jesse's says, like, I wonder, like, if I was more of a passive husband and partner, would she still like me? <laughs> would if she still like pussy, me this much? <laughs> if I were more of a pussy, would she be happier then? Because that's just not my nature. It's like, oh, shut up, Jesse. You know, I'm. I love well, him know, asking, like, is it just that I'm an asshole? She's literally saying you're an asshole. He's like, I wonder if I was less of an asshole, if that would make a difference. Yeah, she's saying you're an asshole, Jesse. But he's. But that's so condescending because he says maybe if I was just a more passive husband and father, she'd be happier. Meaning, suggesting like. If he weren't the alpha uh, making all these tough decisions, if he was just like a lame pussy, maybe she maybe she would like it more. Like, you know what makes me happy? Because this guy's such a piece of shit. I love the fact that in all his interviews, he clearly earlier in the day had like a little headband on to put his hair back because we see him wearing it uh, earlier. And he doesn't realize it's left a dent in his hair. And in all his interviews, his hair like goes back and then there's like a dent and then it pops up again. And yeah. I'm like... That's the best justice, knowing you went on TV with a dent in your hair, you know? But do you think he does that? On, I thought he did that on purpose because I noticed that he had headband hair and then we saw the headband and I was like, oh, I wonder if he does that to give himself that look. Like my little sister always had to go to sleep with her big foam curlers in so she would wake up with the with the hair she wanted, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was the LA like, realtor thing. He's like, I want my hair to look like a roller coaster. <laughs> People on the show are wild, man. Okay, <laughs> they look are. At, Look at look at Kravitz next door. Hello there. This is a two part recap. Okay, this is the end of part one. So thank you so much for listening to this. Just come back a little later for part two. Watch what Crappins would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. 
Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickolus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a can. And Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch or Crafton's ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.